Sir Luton, and welcome to this Markov's Gallery episode for January 2023. We're back on track, people. <laughs> so, same format as before. We're just going to run through the slides of all the stuff that we saw in January, all the stuff we liked. We'll just have a a brief discussion while showing off the wonderful work of all the people that we've selected for this month. First off this month is your pick, Sam. Okay, these are the Union Legends by Susan B. I picked these. Uh, this is only just one picture of them. She's done plenty of others. I picked these because the first of all, what really struck me was the way she'd unified the colours between the three very different models um, using the same blues between them. I really brought them together as a group but also what the basing was just outstanding work on the basing there with the skulls and the rocks on there. What I particularly like is what she's done with Tesla in his legendary suit. It's, it's hard to see in this picture, but she's actually got the foot raised up as if it's walking. And which must have took quite a while to get that pose just right uh, in, in the construction phase. And I just really like this really brought them together these are the union you've got that lovely blue of the union present in all three of them uh whether it's uh teddy's teddy's uh they don't call them raptors what do they call them drogons no togon trodon trodon yeah uh teddy's trodon we've got link lincoln's blue shirt and so on and the wonderful work of his coat flowing behind him or it's tesla's massive mech a really nice piece of work and it's lovely to see these um, so do check them out she's uh, got more pictures of these up close and they're well worth having a good look at yeah it's really nice I, I try and do something similar when I'm doing uh, a colour scheme for a force is try and keep a uniform colour across all the miniatures and it's really tricky to do sometimes I think she's really pulled it off here the blue works beautifully on the trode on it really makes it stand out a lot of people have probably gone for your greens and such, so having the the blue is making is going to make it really stand out on the tabletop. And Lincoln's like blue uniform as well, and a bit of blue on his jacket, and like you say, the the blue on the the mech that really makes it stand out. And the base is gorgeous; it's absolutely stunning work nice little details of the schools and the tufts and the rocks just really really great work and and like you say when you see the close-up photos of them it's just some of them are, are so so good it's really really amazing work I, I think it's the first stuff that susan's posted if i remember rightly so you know what a way to make an entry <laughs> yeah oh one thing i meant with the, with the raised foot on uh, tesla she's got Basically, she's made it look like it's got mud and stuff on the bottom of the foot. Because obviously, the real model would just be smooth resin under there. She's really textured that. So it does look like it's yeah. making a good tread. It's brilliant work. Yeah. It is really, really amazing stuff. So we look forward to seeing more of your work, Susan. So next is the one that I picked from Bashemislav. Hopefully, I've pronounced that correctly. It is the Union Side of the showdown and retribution box I really like all the models of the box and I think he has done a stellar job there's also some pacifiers in the background as well it's all just really really stunning again there's the blue uniform across all of the models to make them seem like a, a force together and it just all really really nice uh, and the lightning as well I really like the, the way he's done the lightning on Tesla um, I think there's some close up shots again on the council and you can really see the detail on things like the pacifiers and the union bell and the lightning work on the shields for the Tesla bots and Tesla himself it's just all really really solid work I love it as well I love the, the colour schemes he's picked I love the grey he's put on the Iron Eagles it's military. It's a military dub grey but it's, it's got a nice sheen to it 
Um, what I really like is how he's done the blue on Tesla. One, I've been looking at my Tesla thinking, I really need to get this guy painted up. But every time I think about it, I thought, I want blue, but I don't want him to look like an uh, ultramarine. Because with the armour, if you're painting blue, there's a risk he's going to look like an ultramarine. I think the way he's done this with his, what do you call that, a sort of pearlescent blue? A shiny metallic blue? Definitely got some uh, colour variation going on in there. It's yeah, brilliant. Definitely. Brings in the Union, but that ain't an ultramarine. That's something clearly very different. And as you said, the lightning work on the shields and Tesla himself, wonderful work. Also, we've got um, Fredrickson in there in his dusty coat and hat. Again, catches catches it brilliantly, but still with enough blue in there to pull in the uh, Union colours and a nice dash of purple as the lightning of his coat. Very swish. Yeah, I just noticed that. Is he an outlaw as well? Fredrickson. Oh, I'm not sure he's out really. He. I'll have to check the card. He does play. He can play for Confederate. He has got the Confederate trait as well as the Union trait. So maybe he oh. can play as outlaw. I'll have to check his card. I'd just be interested to see if he did the other force that he could play with. Whether that purple had been incorporated into that force, because that'd be again like a really nice way of showing a, a double faction sort of thing would wouldn't it that'd be a great way to bring it in so I went for the sa- same artist I went for his enlightened half as, as I would <laughs> you went for the union I went for the enlightened um, again stunning colour work here uh, lovely metallics on the iron horses and the monocavs and the striders this lovely red he's bought in I, it's, it's nice, like metallic red. And what I really liked is the way he's done uh, Eiffel's chair. The leather in it, in the background behind Eiffel, looks really plush, like you could just properly sink into it. It's lovely. Yeah. On top of that, we've also got Smash and Grab, probably one of my favourite models in the game. Beautifully picked out the clothes, so you can clearly see the apron he's got. Lovely grey skin tones and then the lovely shiny metallic of the grab on there. Snook in. If the Union's got the pacifiers, he's got some brutes. And again, lovely on those. What I like, he's done green in the eyes instead of the usual standard red. Makes him stand out just that little bit more. Mm, Yeah, I really like the glow effects on the lamps and on the front of the bikes and the spider and monocav and the, the glow effect that's coming from the RJ canisters yeah. at the back as well it's really it really is really good. good and again we've got the unifying colour it's the red this time it's the red of Eiffel's chair it's the red on Smash and Grab's trousers it's the red on the iron horses it just pulls it all together so subtly but at the same time it gives it that feel of yeah and also awesome base work look at those bases mm, yeah again like sometimes I know one of the, the things I used to say in White Dwarf heavy metal sections is if you can get the base right, it will make the miniature that much better. And it, it, it really does sometimes when I'm painting stuff. It's not until I get the base finished that I look at it and go, yes, that's that's actually worked. Whereas up until that point, generally I'm looking at it and going, oh... I've made a mess of this. <laughs> yeah, I need to start thinking about that. Basically, you just have to thought I just usually just blob on some agrelin earth and just leave it at that. But this is really inspiring. I need to start thinking about bases as actually something I do separate to the model. Don't glue the model to the base unless I want to play with them. And actually build a proper base for them, not just blob on agrelin uh, and just think, yeah, done. I need to, need to make the base happen. So this is my choice. Jim Peterson by Caleb Streets I really liked the really subtle almost it's not quite monochrome what's the word I'm looking for it's it's just a very sepia-ish yes very sepia-ish colour tones that he's done and the colour pop on the red scarf and the RJ canister just make it really stand out more than a lot of Jim Peterson's He's gone very close to what the artwork is on the card. I think it, it's done really, really well. There's some other photos of different angles and things, but this this one really, 
really stood out to me. Um, yeah. Because you don't see many, sadly, you don't see many dead or alive painted up, whereas every single model in that box is is great. And obviously, Jim Peterson has a big, his inspiration is um, quite a well-known Marvel character. So. Yeah. I was just going to say, as well, because that's what when you do see Jim Peterson, there's often a lot of red being used. Um, but to see him in, shall we say, more true, true to life Western colours of, of browns and tans is really nice to see. I also really like they've made him dusty. Uh, his trousers have got a nice set of dust on them. They, he looks like he's just stepped out of a desert, properly stepped out of a desert, not shiny and new. He's filthy. Yep. And, and again, the base work is on all of them, I think. Or it might not be. But I think a lot of the Dead or Alive posse bases are moulded ones, if I remember rightly. I may be misremembering. But this is all moulded. But he's, he's really, really made it work. Yeah. Claiming his little prize of an RJ canister and defending it well. Uh, okay, this is one of my picks for DW. I absolutely loved seeing this by Phil Tozer. The weathering on it is just brilliant. Because uh, as he put on the thing, he says he couldn't see the Commonwealth really looking after their ships and wanted that grimy, sea used look. And the streaking and the rust in the seams, oh, it's brilliant. It's so lovely. And then you've got that nice pop from the cryo generator at the top, ready to ready to go. Yeah. Absolutely love this. Yeah. The, the weathering effects on DW miniatures are hard to pull off. Like I've I've had a go at it myself and it is very, very tricky to get it right. You've got to get it so it doesn't look like the entire ship made of rust and also so you've got enough that it actually stands out on the ships because they are You're doing such a small small scale you've got to get it pin thin yeah I mean the Borodino is a big ship but it's still not that big in comparison to you know tanks and things that you get for World War 2 and and where I'm a 40k and such so you've got to be really on the ball of, of how much you're putting on and know when to say enough is enough and it's again, not just like, the rust, it's the dirt streaking down and the little yeah. highlights in there. And the um, verdigris on the eagle at the front as well. Oh yes, the little the blue-greeny verdigris. Ver- is that what you say? Yeah, copper oxide. Yep. It looks lovely. It looks it's really brilliant. Good. It is incredibly impressive. Next. So this is mine. I think... If I remember rightly, this was a couple of days into January and I spotted this and I was just like, I don't think any, anything else is going to beat this for Dystopian Wars this month. It is just so, so good. And again, Eek Colossus are fairly sort of chunky models, but they're not that big. And getting all of that detail in mm-hmm. must have taken forever. Yeah. The eyes, the the little bits of the armor plate and rims, the vents, the gears. It's just some incredibly detailed work. I mean, I wish I had the patience to detail more stuff like this, but I really, really don't. Mm. It, but the, the results, you cannot deny how good they are. No, and even the little, um, what's the word for those? The mini, the mini, the mini squids. In the shed, in the hull, the cheetah or tom- yeah, che- cheetah or tom- Thank you. They actually they're so detailed. You look like you could pull them out. You can't, but it looks like you could. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. They're... Looks like they're about to pop out. Yeah. Oh, wonderful work! So many tiny details picked out beautifully. Mm. I never noticed the little fan on the top of his head before. Oh yeah, and the little. There's markings on the sides of the claws as well. Oh my goodness. Yep. It is. It is. Mwah. Chef's kiss good. Well done. Okay, I picked this one by Radomir. One of the reasons I picked this is because I love the, Na- the Nanson Explorer model. I think it's a brilliant model. And the colours going on here. Oh, I love them. The, we've got the grit sea greens going. And then we've got these, these lovely orange... Rust pan, rust almost rust panels. It wouldn't be rust on, on an enlightened ship. 
and we've got the magenta-ish, pinkish colours picking out on the side panels and on and underneath the sides. I just think this is a brilliant colour scheme. It's loud, it's brash, it's very enlightened. It's we're here and we don't care. Can't wait to see. I don't think he's pasted another picture this yet where it's actually finished off with the guns on it. But it looks stunning. I just love the colours. It stands out. Doesn't hide. No, absolutely not. It is. One of the things that is good about the Enlightened is I think you could probably do them in any colour you wanted and still get away. I think even neon pink would work for their ships because it just it would still work for them because it's so weird to look at in, in terms of shape that most colours would work. And... I can't remember who said this to me, but somebody said this to me a long time ago. Is that red and green should never be seen. Like you should never put red and green to get in together. But this proves that completely wrong because it absolutely does work together. And the, yeah, it's, the, it's color. It's color theory. It's putting your primary colors together. Although it's usually blue and green, you shouldn't be seeing without yellow in between. But yeah, red and green. Red and green shouldn't be put together either. They every time you do it, it looks like Christmas decorations. So it's uh, you definitely should not put red and green together, but it's here. Yeah, it works. Yeah, and, and again, red, green, and gold. Like it, 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 they are primary Christmas tree colours. It looks nothing like a Christmas. This is like the least Christmas tree looking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and it, it, again, it's those details that he's picked out with the, the goldy colour and the red on the the trims on down parts yeah. and then the, just why the hell not put some blue on the launch ramps uh, it all just works yep it's um, you couldn't get away with that on a crown ship let's put it that way but you can no. definitely get away with that on uh, an enlightened one I think the only other ship you get away with this colour scheme on is possibly the Empire but not yeah. in these proportions no you would have it... to switch them around slightly I think enlightened is the only way you would ever get up away with this so I picked this I sniped this because I thought that as soon as you saw it you might steal it it was on the discord the person wanted to be credited as mead bear so that is what I have done it is a really good colour scheme for the crown yes the flying vessels are I think a lot of people are going to possibly going to do them the same way that they do the land ships which you know it's fine, but I really like the blue. I may potentially steal this for my crown flying squadrons. Potentially, I'm not sure yet. But um, I, I just love the colour scheming on it. It really, really works for the ships. I think so too. Yeah, blue and silver is a really good combination with just the highlights of the gold we've got in there. It's very nice. Um, it fits. You've got ship, so they're in the sky. So blue helps with the camouflage. That fits as well. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't certainly wouldn't paint something that was flying as the red as we normally see with the crowns because they would just stick out like a sore thumb. My favourites are the actually the tintagels at the front. I love the way he's picked out the wing shapes on the front bows. It's oh, yeah. they're lovely and stunning work on the water as well. Each all those waters look, even though I know those bases are identically moulded, they all look different somehow. The way he's picked out the waves each time makes each one look a bit different. Yeah, it's. Um, I imagine it's a, a combination of good dry brushing and rotating them different ways. So, like one, you put one way, one put the other way. Catch the catch the tops of the waves in a different angle. Yeah, that's mm. lovely. Yeah really really great work I'm looking forward to uh, I imagine he's probably going to pick up the Avalon at some point and um, really looking forward to seeing how that looks in this blue scheme and that, that may be the um, defining moment of me picking blue or sticking with the green we shall see okay so for our tables I saw the Sebastian o had run a league and he got multiple tables on the go what I really liked about it was the simplicity of some of this stuff. And some of them go re really show you do not need to spend a fortune to get a really good table. 
So we've got a mix of, for example, just plain rocks of just some ordinary trees, tree models put on there, which gave a really nice table, especially with the uh, frosted frosted baffle mat you got on there. On the top, we've got a combination of rocks and some built some some buildings from various uh, sources. And then down in the bottom right, we've got a whole Rio Sonora going on. And they all look stunning. I mean, these are really good tables for playing on your league. Brilliant. You'd happily play multiple games on those. And with lots of tactical choices with the placement of the buildings and the rocks and so on. If they could get that each time that's set up, you'd start to play and you'd know your way around it know your way around it and start to find where the good points are where the bad points are I don't know if they're going to be able to do that each time but really really nice tables all three of those yeah they're really great and it just something that I like to try and do in our videos is do a, a size comparison of things and this just goes to show you how big those Rio Sonora buildings are because if you look at that table you can see like Carl the Black isn't a small model but it looks tiny on top of that Rio Sonora building same goes with Creation 6 five, it five? I think it's 5 with the uh, club hands and the gun on his back he's a big model as well and he's, he also looks pretty small compared to that building so those like, and it fills an entire table so that Rio Sonora set is huge and it fills an entire 3x3 three three table easily so yeah. it's a really good showcase for that as well same for the top table is you can see the a couple of red oak buildings in there and like you say a couple of other buildings from somewhere else and there's some mantic trees and some old citadel trees it's just a nice mix of of terrain and the, the bottom one that's got a couple of bits of fence and some trees and some rocks on like you say mm. Even on a budget, you can make a table look really good with a, a, a good amount of scatter on it. And this just goes to prove that you can spend a lot of money on a table, you can spend a little bit, or you can you know, just buy a couple of buildings if you don't want to buy an entire set and you're still going to have a, a decent table at the end of it as long as you theme it all correctly and it's not too mishmash and odd hodgepodge. But um, yeah, agreed. All these tables are great. I imagine it's drawing people in on the games nights if they're doing it at a club. People are coming over and saying, so what are you playing? Yeah. Catches the attention, certainly. So, this one's so good, it deserves two slides. <laughs> <laughs> it does indeed. I say it's so good. It's so big, it deserves two slides. So, Cohen has been working on an Imperium Fortress board for some time now. He did some rocks previously with some bits and pieces on them and now he's just say just at the sort of middle of last month finished this table. Yeah. It looks just astounding. Like there's a a really famous Dystopian Wars picture from the Spartan days of like a big city board that the community built for I think it was either Essen Spiel or Sloop I'm not sure which one it was and that table is incredible and it fills almost an entire I think it's 4x4 four four board might be a 6x4 four 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 board and it's got a similar sort of premise where there's a, a raised fortress above the sea but it's a lot bigger I think if Cohen keeps going the way he's going with this sort of stuff, he will probably have a cemetery he will buy this time next year. It's going to be indoors. Just look at the size of it. That is an ice maiden and it's dwarfed by the bridge it's going under. I know Cohen had some issues when he was building that bridge where the legs should go and now he's got one there. Perfect. I mean, look at the rocks, the detail on those rocks and the buildings that are on top, all wonderfully in scale. And you've got the lovely, there's an archway been worn through one of the rocks so that gives you some nice tactical choices of trying to sail through that hopefully not crashing into something that's nice sturgeon you and flare could really ruin your day there <laughs> yeah yeah look at the detail here uh, this radar dish these great oh my goodness it's so good that radio tower there's just so much going on here this i've if you got to see this for real, I imagine you could spend at least half an hour just looking at the build. You'd never get any gaming done. You'd just go, what? look at this, look at this. 
You wouldn't get anything yep. done for a good half hour. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely like a table you'd want somebody to take to a convention. Like This is the sort of thing would inspire people to come to a, a booth at a, a games convention. You'd just be like, wow, that looks amazing. I remember when we went around yeah. Games Expo, the first or second time, I can't remember which one it was, but there was a Sarissa Precision booth and they had a bunch of tables that um, the train to to Mel had done for them with all, some of their kits. I think it was him. Might not be. I'm, I might be wrong there, but whoever it was, they'd done some incredible work with the the kits that they've got. And although there was no game specifically for it, I was drawn to it. I just wanted to look at these gorgeous tables. And this is, you know, the same thing. You, you'd be like you say, you, you'd spend at least. 10 15 minutes just going over all the details. If I remember rightly from when he posted it, it's got some bits from the Spartan Imperium fortresses and things on it, so it's not all. He managed to pick up an old kit for the. There's an Imperium. There is an Imperium fortress he's picked up. Yeah, so it's not all scratch built, but there is a lot of stuff in there that's either 3D printed or scratch built, all the rock stuff, and I think the bits of the bridge are scratch built or 3D printed and then there's bits and pieces from those kits but still man, it looks amazing right, so that is it for this month's mark of Gary we are starting to select Sam's already picked one for February's gallery so we're off to a big start <laughs> you picked two, crikey yeah, I just, I just don't put the picture up oh, yeah. yet but I've definitely picked yeah, two I know just remembered what the other one is yeah so you know we are keeping our eyes on the council and the lounge for all your wonderful work we will drop you a message on messenger and sort of say hey can we use this and um, if you say yes you can expect to appear in one of these lovely videos and we will give you a shout out so thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one happy trails pilgrims